Okay, so we're just gonna go over, um, kind of go over your experience. I read your final check-in document. It was so sweet, I loved it. Um, but I'm just gonna ask you a few questions about the program, I'm recording this, and if it comes out good, and I think it's nice, I'll, I'm gonna upload it to our YouTube channel, um, and I might make it unlisted or private, I'm not really sure. So, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, great. So Verena, you, this is Verena. She's been a student and she did the 200 hour and the 300 hour this year. Um, and she just completed her 300 and soon she'll be able to apply for her 500 hours of yoga line. So congratulations. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. And um, I want you to tell me a little bit about the 300 program and what you liked the most about it. I like the whole process, the diversity of topics, like the whole package was beautiful. It had everything in there. So I don't know if there's something specific. I like to find out more about the different modern yoga gurus. I like to find out things about the energy body. And um, I like the anatomy, the different parts. Um, I also really like to um, try out things in my class. So when you um, gave some tests, I try this meditation. So things that I didn't think about because if you start teaching yoga, it's like it's always the same because I try to find structure and we have always different um, guests there. So it's I don't have to do many different things because it's always new people, so they don't know. So I at first I tried to stay with the same structure, same music, but through trying out different things and was more variety in my class and I learned new things and I tried out new things. I implemented the breathing pranayama in the beginning and at the end. I did the meditation, I did the muscle relaxation, different postures that you suggested. So that was uh, good to just really in practice try out things. And how would you say the 200 hour differed from the 300 hour and how do you think it progressed? The 200 hour was very exhausting with so many classes because there were so many classes and that uh, the focus was a lot. How many hours did I do throughout the week? How am I in my 60 hours? And uh, that was not this time. It just happened along the way. Right. Because in the 200 hour, you had to go to five classes per week take five yoga classes per week and really listen to the teachers and pay attention to what they're saying and their cues. And also, you know, those, those 60 hours of yoga classes that you had to take during the 200 really helped your, kind of helped you break through with your asana practice. And it made you decide that you really liked the shtanga, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was better for my body. I was a little bit better in shape, I feel. <laughs> and I'm forced to do like five hours and I didn't do as many at the beginning. I think I started a week later. So I had to do, I think, six hours. And sometimes there were things going on with kids. So I had sometimes seven, eight hours a week. So it was a lot of yoga. I did a lot of double classes. So I was really in it. Now I'm like doing three, four classes, sometimes two. It depends on how my schedule is because I, yeah, I didn't have to. So I just do what works with my schedule and don't push it in. So it was like, more workout and more asana based, where this was more like thinking and for the workshop planning, trying to find out a topic that resonates with me. It was uh, different. I mean, it was also more advanced because it was more trying right. to. More, more meditation, that. more pranayama, more studies, more reading of the historical texts and stuff like that. Yeah, and I mean teaching. I was teaching, right? So I was uh, teaching not often. I was teaching once a week, but still, it was like yeah, different. I can't even remember not teaching. So now I'm thinking about it was this March that I was starting with your program and I was not teaching because I was a student. Then yeah, it's different. Yeah, and then by June you were the teacher. And then you had your weekly class and then you did the 300 and then you presented an amazing pranayama workshop, which I thought was awesome. It was an hour and 15 minutes and I just felt like I was floating on cloud nine. So for the 300, you have to do a present a workshop 
off of one of the lessons that we learned throughout the 300 hour program, which is a five month program. And you did a pranayama, plus you added some extra breath work beyond pranayama to your workshop, which I thought was like, super amazing. And by the end of the day, I felt really, really centered and grounded. And I think you did such a great job. And, you know, not just teaching the asanas, cause I've been to your asana classes, um, but also being able to teach beyond the asanas. I thought you did such a great job and the 300 hours more producing than, you know, learning it's taking the lessons that you learned and then actually having to, to teach it. And how did you feel about getting out of your comfort zone and kind of teaching more philosophical type subjects and more, you know, the subjects like meditation and, um, you know, the breath work and, um, some of the things and learning how to teach off of your mat, you know, not just standing there and demonstrating the whole time. Yeah, I, felt, I felt like the three and that was it's just a lot of aspects easier because I had the foundation of the 200 right before. So at the 200, I was nervous for the, just for the 30 minutes class and everything because it was so new to um, get all the, the breathing right to inhale, exhale, and uh, when to do it and all the, different poses and now it was like it just came out of the flow because I did meditation we did a pranayama workshop you had a pranayama video there um, in our fourth fifth week and so it was always it was different because it was like more knowledge already there so it was I felt it was not as much out of my comfort zone than to teach the class the 30 minutes class in the um, 200. So you think the 200 final exam was a little bit harder than the 300 just because it was so new? Yeah, for the time I was in. Now I would probably would not make a difference. Now I would say it would be equal. But uh, where I was in June, that was, but I could not have done a workshop in June either. So um, it was just my progress was, was um, so I think, but it, it was flowing easier I think and just a different kind of preparation so it's uh I really enjoyed I really enjoyed teaching it I felt like it was you know more more like uh more school-based where the 200 is definitely more asana based and all like anatomy and an asanas and how to teach a class where the 300 is is just a little bit softer and more mental and like less, you know, physical in the movement area, but more physical or internal, actually. Did you feel that way too? Yeah, I mean, also with our weekly meetings, it was, uh, we went deep into the Yoga Sutras and uh, the Bhagavad Gita and different texts. So it was like, I would not have understood all the paragraphs in depth if we would not have discussed them so thoroughly. Yeah, I enjoyed that too. I love having talks about the philosophical text because you can read it and you have an idea in your mind, but when you're with the, the group and you can talk it out, you know, and then you're like, well, in my life, like, this is how I experienced this, this shloka, this sutra, this, you know, this chapter, whereas you can say the other person, will be like in my life, I experienced it this way. I'm like, wow, you know, we, we all come from a different perspective and we can take these um, these lessons and really implement them into our own lives in different ways, even though the words are all exactly the same. Yeah, so it was great to get different perspectives. Also like your perspective, Teresa's perspective. So it's, it's nice to talk about it because if you read it and your mind, what could it mean and what does it mean for me, but to get the different perspectives perspectives <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, ah yeah that's all, yeah it makes sense like it's uh opens up possibilities right. and ideas so it's it was great to have the discussions never miss our tuesdays i'm gonna miss our <laughs> tuesdays too you know because it was also a learning experience for me i mean i'm i'm gonna do this again and again but you know every time i have a discussion it's kind of like, for me, it reminds me of like Abraham Hicks. We are on the leading edge of, you know, the, the leading edge of create, creation, right? Every time we have a discussion, even if it's about the same thing, we're, we're seeing it in a new way because we are different 
every time we approach it. And I think that's what's the, the beauty of the Bhagavad Gita, especially, is that even though the, the words never change, we change every time we approach it. And so the meaning of it changes for us as we approach it. Yep. So I, I love that. And I loved having our discussions and our Tuesday nights together. And it was just so fun and casual, you know, when we have our weekly meetings online, you know, everybody's in the coziness of their own home and, you know, things may be going on in the background, but who cares? Because we are just, you know, having just a casual discussion in our pajamas <laughs> and, and it's a lot of fun. And um, you know, in the old days when we used to do the in-person teacher training the whole time, you had to commit like a whole day to just sitting there, you know, eight hours on a Saturday, eight hours on a Sunday where, you know, when we we're so grateful to be able to do video chat now that we can also break up the, those times and and do it from the comfort of our own homes that so that we don't have to leave our children. We don't have to leave our families. We don't have to drive across town um, and. I'm really grateful that you participated in that because it did make it at least easier for me. I hope it made it easier for you. Yeah, no, it was great. Like remember one time as the kids were running around and playing in the best of, okay, <laughs> I need a break here because that's getting too loud, but it was just life around me. That's... Yeah, it's light and easy. It's not so serious. You know, the topic is just you know, just us talking and, and, um, and learning together. And I love that. Do you have anything else that you want to add about the program? Like if you could tell somebody, you know, who's on the fence about taking the 200 or the 300 hour program, you know, what would, what would you, what would you tell them about it to encourage them to do it? The 200? I mean, I had, for me, I had uh, two reasons. I wanted to since a longer time become a yoga teacher because I wanted to teach yoga, but also for my personal development. Like I wanted to commit to something that I really do and for my personal process and uh, to learn. And so it's like a great way of getting a certificate to become a teacher, but much more than that. It's like, it's so much, it's a guideline for life it's like with all the journaling and teaches so much about ourselves so it's uh like a therapy class too it's like um body mind spirit so i would it's amazing it's amazing to dive deep into something if someone has a passion for yoga it's great to start a training because it brings you deeper in it and it's so much more than just going to classes there you get glimpses because some yoga teachers say they give you some of their knowledge and like about meditation, some do pranayama, some give you some of their wisdom, also some say something about the yamas, the niyamas and um, how to set an intention and such things, but the depths you just learn when you really dive into it and in a training, you commit to it. So you really uh, push to dive into it. And it's uh, in the process, you learn so much about ourselves and uh, it's just, uh, great way for personal development spiritually and, uh, and emotionally in so many levels and the 300 is it's a great way to even dive deeper into yoga learn more about the, where it's coming from about all the yoga gurus about about the body more in depth like what with what pose what muscle we use and uh, like about the, what we did yesterday, we did about the, the pain associated to different um, vertebrae and such things. So it's all, if you want to learn about the body, the mind, how to control the mind and how to work with your body. And it's great. It's a great way to, and if that's in your passion to learn more about yoga in general, to do have a modality that helps you in life. I, I agree a hundred percent. So now your next step, you've registered for a hypnotherapy course, which I think is super interesting. And I'm, I, I can't wait to see you, you know, get through that. Um, and then you also mentioned that you want to work on yoga therapy. Have you been, you know, thinking about or researching any yoga therapy courses? Because, you know, it's just above and beyond from here. Yeah. I, I mean, I have one, actually one of my, um, 
teach us in the hypnotherapy training. She's a yoga therapist. So it was uh, interesting that she has a hypnotherapy, the yoga teacher and the yoga therapy, that she works with her patients like in combination. So I thought it was pretty interesting. But I, I looked up some places. I think uh, there's one up north, and I, but I have not decided on that because now I committed to the hypnotherapy training. I think it goes until at least end of April with a total of 500 hours. Okay. So it's every six weeks, 100 hours. I finished 200, I think. So, yeah, this is like, and I'm planning to do retreats and different things and to implement all what I learned into working with helping helping people. So, but there's so much more. I mean, I always look for something. And for me, I just have to be careful. I like to have a tendency to start so many things. And... <laughs> I don't want to overload myself. Sometimes it's also in between time to slow down because I think I, in the last 10 years, I never slowed down. I always did something. Like I worked on my PhDs and I worked on, I did nutrition. I did uh, breastwork classes. I did the uh, integration coaching training. There was always something what I did to educate myself in different ways of spirituality. And sometimes it's good in between to also not do everything to the same time. Yes, just just take it one at a time. I, I totally understand. That was my my 2021 was like me. I took course after course after course. And then 2022, I taught, taught, taught. And now 2023, I'm already signed up for one course and I already know what my next course is going to be. So, I mean, I'm interested in meditation, pranayama. The one You sent me the pranayama one that you are doing yes. in um, January. They're just... I'm just not sure with the times and everything. They'll so offer it to, again. Yeah, they'll yeah. offer that one again, yeah. Because I would be really interested in breastwork, pranayama, because it's like magical what you can do with your own breast and you have it always there. Like with, with the time with the yoga, you can do with our body. Our body as our instrument, like like the breast, our movements, how we can heal ourselves just with us. We have everything, all the knowledge here and everything else we can do. We don't need anything else we didn't need anybody else we just need to figure out how to work with us we have everything and that's beautiful to realize like through also through hypnosis like how much you can shift yeah certain things and i'm like they're excited too to learn more and to help people on so many different levels like with the subconscious i did yesterday a class about the subconscious how we can circumvent the critical factor that always are almost doubting us. And when you go into hypnosis, you go around that critical factor that doubts and put suggestions in the subconscious mind because some things we don't believe. If I think I'm now this and this and I am have now that amount of money and now I'm successful there and there, but I don't have it, so I don't believe it. But if we program it in our subconscious mind, and we're striving to get there. So there's so many beautiful techniques there that uh, help us to improve. And if I heal and improve more, I can help others. Amen to that. I agree for sure. So as we continue to grow, we lift others up with us. Like at the, I had my little one yesterday. I put his hand on his heart and I said, always love yourself. Always be proud of yourself. I mean, yeah, I love myself. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't taught. I wasn't taught that. As a kid, I mean, uh, at least in Germany in the 80s, when you then you're like you're selfish, you're egotistical, and you have put yourself last and let others first. So it's, but it's not about that. It was just a different um, parenting or education style. So now, my kids are always, even if there are things going on, I always want to make sure you're loved, love yourself, connect with yourself. We're doing meditation in the evening and think more and more when they grow older, they will step into that. Sometimes they're little, then like, oh, what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> but I think they will, they will click in if I repeat it more and more. Yeah, they'll be able to use those techniques when when they when they have to go through stuff as they get older. 
that she actually, I was told, I was in a meeting with her school, with her school teachers, and um, she's always a little bit resistant when I say, and oh, mommy, you're always with your positivity, but she, they say that she's teaching kids about positivity, that she's a sunshine, that she always stays positive and you can do it. You just have to try, even if you fail. Just... So she's basically teaching what I'm teaching her to her other classmates. But for me, she's like, ah, oh. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're teaching her and she's uplifting others and it just spreads. It just spreads infinitely. They say in India that you, you can be a mango, you can be a mosquito, or you can be a candle. And you can be sweet, you can be annoying, or you can light others up with the candle and spread your light. And um, I definitely believe that you're a candle. And I just um, am so grateful that, you know, you spent this year with me. And, um, you know, we've got some things in the works in the future. So um, I just appreciate you so much. And... And sending, you know, and sending your students instead of sending your friends, Tiffany, you know, did the 200 and, um, and I just think it's wonderful. So I just want to thank you and thank you for this. And, and thank you for, you know, giving your testimonial today so you can share it with others and hopefully others will be able to watch this and, um, and want to do the training too, and follow a similar path of personal growth and education beyond the 200 and the 300. Yeah. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you so much for everything you do it was an amazing time it was always so beautiful to just talk to you chat with you you're so compassionate and it's everything when it was an issue with scheduling said, no it's fine you're fine just don't worry it was always like uh, you were so, un so understanding when my life got busy and with everything that came up so you're a beautiful human and you spread so much into the world and to your students and give so much so thank you for everything you're doing Thank you, Verena. I'm so glad that we met and I'm looking forward to the future. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Have a wonderful night and I will talk to you soon. OK. Yeah. Talk to you soon. See you latest on Monday, I think. Yep. See you on Monday. <laughs> OK. Bye. Good night. Bye.